meeting of the Board of Education dated tonight, Tuesday, March 24, 2020. This, is, this meeting is now called to order. Smith, please do a roll call. Ms. Weems? I'm here. Mr. Mukuma? Here. Mr. Johnson? Present. Mr. Rich? Here. Ms. Cummings? Here. I myself here. Ms. Green? Here. All present. Thank you very much. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America, of America to the and Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, liberty and justice, justice for all. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? There is, Madam Chair. I move, I move that the Board of Education approve the March 24th, 2020 regular meeting agenda as presented. Support. There was a motion to approve the agenda by Mr. Muckamow, supported by Mr. Johnson. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The agenda is approved as it is written. Moving to announcements. Welcome to the March 24th Farmington Board of Education meeting. The next meeting of the Board of Education will be held on April 7th at 6 o'clock p.m. The meeting is open to the public and will be cablecast live on TV 10. As all of our members are participating remotely, I am formally giving voting rights to all board members for remote voting. Public comment is available via email at info at fpsk12.net. Again, that's info at fpsk12.net and via phone at 248. 426-5000, Public comments will be shared after items from the secretary. Moving to item three, items from the secretary, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. Um, we received correspondence from Melissa Wierzynski regarding Wood Creek IB celebration. And we also received uh, correspondence from Brenda Caulfield um, regarding closing schools and also another correspondence from Ms. Wierzynski about the IB celebration and taking day canceled. Um, communication are acknowledged and when appropriate, a response is provided. Thank you very much. Moving to item four on the agenda, public comments. If there's any public comments, we have provided two mains for which you can participate. I will be reading the public comments as they have been received. Good evening, please understand that there may be some glitches during this first remote school board meeting. We have experienced some connections being lost. If that happens, those members will rejoin the meeting. Thank you. Public comments received so far are from Bruce and Sherry McCormick. Our daughter is a senior at Farmington and we are worried about her graduation. She has already accepted, paid her deposit and her scholarships are in place for Cedarville University. She needs to be able to finish her classes online so she can graduate on time. Right now, there is an only, and that's not going to help her graduate. She lost her high school last year and has worked very hard to succeed and finish well this year. 
We just want to know what the plan is, at least for seniors like her, who are two months from graduation. Please help them to be successful. Thank you in advance for your effort. Our next correspondence is from Edward C. Nieshoff, MD. Please count this email as one vote in favor of an extended closure to FPS. When we get to summer, things will be viewed from a very different perspective as hospitals being begin to overflow with patients. See the project, projections in this NYT piece. By July 4th, it is estimated with moderate measures to limit spread, there will be infection of 50%, 54% of Oakland County residents corresponding to 650,000 people. Peak expected mid-June. Try it for yourself. Scroll to the interactive graphic. I recommend that we plan for next academic year. This one is done in any traditional sense. Let's acknowledge reality sooner than later. A graphic was provided to go with this correspondence. Our next correspondence was received by C. Hardison. Hi, please explain this Michigan rule about online learning, not counting with the children's grades. Is this true in Farmington Hills? Seeing that there are no additional public comments, we will close public comments and move to item five, reports from board committees. First one, human resource committees, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. Um, uh, we met March 17th, and um, the first item of, on the committee was the IT. Dr. Herrera shared information regarding contractional arrangements related to information regarding the um, IT tech department. Um, the second item on the agenda was the coronavirus. Ms. Smith and uh, Mr. Danziger um said there were some challenges the district staff has worked diligently to provide a, a staff with as much as possible information um around this atmosphere of uncertainty because of things change minute by minute staff has received extensive communicating um communications regarding pay uh, reporting and efforts on supporting students and families. There has been community confusion on staff quarantines and um, whether or not someone has an actual diagnosis. There is concern over graduation, students' credits, and prom will still be determined as appropriate. So then we had the updates. Um, um, staff have filtered questions to HR since last week with uh, daily emails to all staff from HR regarding answers to any questions that have arose, early childhood tuition program payments from parents. Uh, parents are currently being, their, their questions are being currently um, taken care of through the district. So um, parents are are asking for, uh, some parents are requesting refunds, some want credit towards next year. Uh, formulation of investigation process. So Dr. Herrera and Mr. Danziger, they were the presenters. Uh, Dr. Herrera and Mr. Herrera, uh, Mr. Danziger shared information and updates regarding the formalization of roles and processes in investigations regarding concerns with employees and their conduct. Um, sub pays, sub substitutes and parapros pay rate, um, that was discussed by Mr. Danziger. <laughs> he was the presenter. Um, challenging job markets and availability for uh, substitute parapros um, are key reasons for a rate adjustment. So other districts may have, you know, be paying their uh, sub pair pros more. So there was the discussion of talking about doing that with ours. Um, so the pay for the pair pros, uh, sub pair pros 
our com uh, uh, comparability of pay with other districts um, was considered. Um, bargaining, um, Mr. Danziger addressed this issue. Um, he discussed that he shared information from a recent uh, conference at um, I, which he observed regarding recent bargaining in other districts and that information was shared. So that, that um, con concludes my report. And if there's any questions, um, I'd be willing to take them. Thank you. Moving to Finance Thank and you. Facilities Committee, Mr. Rich. Yes, so the Finance and Facilities Committee met uh, also on March 17th. I was unable to be there, but thank you to Mr. Johnson and Ms. Weems, as well as the other uh, people in attendance who were able to keep everything going uh, as needed. We discussed the big pack number 14, which is the central office and actual education center roof projects. Those will be discussed tonight, as well as IT custodial services update architect and construction manager process for the March 2020 bond, the bond sale, uh, the negotiated sale versus competitive sale, and timelines on that bond sale and bond work. Also, budget parameters and assumptions in the budget forecast, uh, which Ms. Kaminsky will be uh, bringing forward tonight. Uh, negotiations uh, being put on hold Forget. until... Um, until uh, we are back in session or as determined by administration and the union leadership. And then we adjourned uh, that evening as well. The full minutes are available um, and are going to be approved later tonight. Thank you. Uh, moving to the first item, review of bid packet 14, central office and MEC group that is Mr. Smith. Can you guys hear me? Guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Um, we have Scott Smith here tonight to um, re just review bid packet 14. Or is yep. Aaron, Aaron, are you handling that or is Scott handling that? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was planning on handling it and Scott may chime in, but I, I go and present it. Um, Thanks for having us. Good evening. Uh, March 4th, we conducted the bid package number 14, which consists of the roof and replacement um, at the, uh, the administration center, as well as the Maxfield Education Center. Uh, we received 10 total bids, ranging in cost from about 178000 to 438000 Superior Services Incorporated, Incorporated who, had, who has been on the uh, several past Farmington projects, uh, the qualified low bidder. We conducted post bid interviews, uh, post bid interview with Superior Services in our office. Uh, went through the process to make sure they had everything covered. They did. Uh, so tonight, we're recommending uh, Superior Services for a contract award for both the uh, Shulman Administration Building along with the Maxfield Education uh, Center in the amount of $300,230. Um, that work will take place uh, depend pending work scope and work stoppage of course, uh, late spring, early summer. And uh, we're uh, open for questions. Are there any questions? Okay, you know, no questions. Thank you. Oops, Mr. Rich. Uh, not on this specifically. I just want to encourage uh, people on this since it's our first time doing this. Please remember to mute yourself uh, when you're not talking so that there's not feedback. Thank you. Are there any discussions related to the review of bid pack 14? Seeing no discussion, we will move to the review of budget parameters, 
assumptions and budget forecast development process 2020-2021. Great, good evening. Um, included in your board packet was the budget development timeline, as well as the parameters used to develop an initial forecast for the 2020-2021 budget. Um, so just quickly running through the timeline, we had originally anticipated um, presenting this at the March 10th meeting um, and have it approved this evening. So just kind of push back one board meeting. We were trying to get this presented at a committee meeting prior to the full board. Um, and so we will have the board or the budget document available um, by the end of May, that's May 28th, for review at the June 2nd board meeting. That's when we'll hold our public budget hearing as well as review um, uh, the, the tax levy information with the budget and tax levy being approved on June 16th. So just running through um, quickly, just to explain the process, uh, the budget parameters um, were developed with um, the assistance of, of cabinet. We did get their input. Um, we were, we didn't uh, get a chance to present them to the committee. We ran out of time, um, but the intent is to review these budget parameters and assumptions with committee and then bring them to the full board for input. Um, and so the parameters that I'm just gonna quickly run through with you were used to develop that forecast um, that was also included in the packet. So on uh, the revenue side, um, of course, a lot of our, our revenue is based on the students that we educate. And so looking at um, projections from both Stanfred as well as Plant Marie and Cressa, there was a range projected um, from both those companies between 53 and 92 student loss. Um, we've also been looking at our entering kindergarten, kindergarten class and exiting seniors. Um, and that amounted to a decline of about 83 students. Um, and one of the, the other things that we are looking at as well is um, the decline in enrollment between grades two through 11. So students that may have left us um, in those grades. And we averaged about 120 student loss um, over the last three years. So what we've incorporated into this forecast is a loss of 120 students. Um, and so that's roughly about $1.2 million for us. So um, again, this was prepared several weeks ago and a lot has changed um, since putting this together with the coronavirus and the impacts that that will have on our economy. Um, so prior to that, our economy was improving. Uh, the governor had presented her budget on February 6th and proposed funding increases for K-12 education. Um, she proposed a foundation allowance increase um, with a range of $150 to $225 per pupil. So because we are a higher funded district, we would receive that $150 per pupil. Um, she also proposed funding increases for at-risk, um, special education, and the preschool school readiness program. Um, so we are including an increase of $100 per pupil in the full cost at this time. I did not include any increase for at-risk special education or the preschool programs at this point. I always like to wait to see what the Senate and House bring out in their budget versions as well. Um, so again, Talking about categorical funding, hopefully we'll at least maintain the same level of funding for those type of programs, special education, at risk, early childhood, adult ed. Um, and so no change has been proposed for those. Um, nutrition services um, continues to cover their direct program costs. Um, and um, we, also are able to charge the maximum amount of indirect costs to that fund to help support the general fund. So 
it's about $159,000 or just under 11%. Um, we are expecting federal grants to remain at the same level or decrease slightly um, due to spending down of some of our carryover funds. But if you recall federal funds, we budget revenues to equal expenditures. So if we reduce revenues, we would also decrease expenditures. So they have no effect on the bottom line. Um, as far as revenues for our PA 18 funds, those are the funds we receive from Oakland through Oakland County. Um, we're projecting to increase about 1% and that's really due to increasing property tax values as well as increased uh, special education costs overall in the previous year. On the expense side, um, wage costs will be budgeted at negotiated levels. And at the current time, we are estimating um, an amount about $400,000 for um, possible bargaining costs. And really that amount was put into this forecast um, to uh, essentially have a balanced budget at this time. And so we know that if we want to, um, you know, give out more than $400,000, we have some work to do on looking for um, other reductions within our budget to allow for um, additional um, negotiations. We've also included um, reduction in wages and benefits for 10 teacher retirements. And that's something that we do each year. So that's about 600 and $65,000. So the projected mixer's retirement rate was included at 28.18% with the UAAL at 12.42%. So it's a total of about 40.6%. Um, so just under 41%. And that's continued to increase each year. Um, when I put this together, the retirement rates had not yet been released. They have been released. Uh, the, the highest retirement rate that we pay into the system on is 28.21%. So that one was fairly close, but they did increase the UAAL to 14.51%. So it went up over two percentage points. Typically, we receive additional funding to help offset that unfunded liability. So hopefully that will be included in um, a the future uh, funding proposals for schools. So on the uh, benefit side, health insurance and, and the remainder of fringe costs um, that we have, we are, based on our current claims cost, um, we are estimating claims to remain in line with what our current illustrative rates are. So in line with what we're projecting those costs to be. Um, so I've not included any increase in our benefit costs in the general fund for this upcoming year. Um, as you recall, we have this benefit stabilization fund, which pays for all of our claims costs. So if we were to incur costs higher than we anticipated, that fund would be able to absorb any of those overages at this point. Uh, revenues from our preschool uh, education will continue to cover direct program costs as well as a portion of the their indirect costs, which are approximately 4%. Um, we also work in conjunction um, with or in collaboration with other school districts to provide services for students outside of our district for which we have then collaborative agreements um, for special education services. Um, and so we're estimating for those costs or the, that revenue to remain stable at about 625,000, which is what we currently have budgeted. Um, so this year in our 2019-20 budget, we um, made an allocation to transfer $300,000 to our technology other projects fund and $600,000 to our bus purchase maintenance fund. And that was to begin to restore those allocations for future technology needs 
as well as capital needs in the future. So we know that, um, and thankfully we received fun, uh, the approval from our voters to issue our $98 million um, bond, but we know that we need to start setting aside money again to, to uh, fund future projects after we uh, complete spending that money. Um, so we'll continue those allocations into the 2020, 2021 um, budget. So 300,000 for technology, other projects, as well as 600 into the bus purchase maintenance fund. Um, so we continue to explore and implement cost savings wherever we can, um, especially with our energy savings program, green teams. Um, other costs and revenues are anticipated to remain flat with the exception of utilities, which we've increased about 3%. Um, and we you know, provide all of our budget and financial information on our website. So the um, forecast that you have included in your packet does show us at um, basically revenues equaling expenditures, there's a small um, excess of about $3,000, which brings us to about a 13% fund balance. So right now, um, the forecast as presented it is balanced. There's a lot more work that needs to be done. And as I mentioned, not knowing the um, economic impact of the coronavirus and what will actually happen with funding as we move forward, um, this will definitely be revised. We'll stay on top of things and bring information to you uh, as as needed. I can answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mrs. Wayne. You, you're you're muted. Today. It is showing up as muted on our end. So you might have to click a couple of times. We will give an opportunity for Mr. James to come back if we need to pass that along to him. So, um, um, can you guys hear me now? Yep, we can yes. hear you. Okay, great. Um, so, I, I think I heard you say, Ms. Domenici, that we um, will review this in committee. Is that correct? It was supposed to be presented at committee this past time, but do. Um, we only had a short period of time, and this was the one item that um, we weren't able to present. I can definitely bring it back to a, a future committee meeting, if that's what you like. And, well, no no need. I was just going okay. to reserve my question for the committee meeting if this were going to come back to the committee meeting. That's all I was, I was trying to figure out. Because I recall that we did not have a chance to get to this one, and that was primarily because I had the um, exit. Um, so 
So if this is going to come back to committee, I'll hold my question. Yes, I, I believe it was going to need to come back to committee maybe once or twice more because we move forward. Um, okay. we'll, have, we'll have further discussions, you know, as we get into negotiations and staffing and, and some other things that we're going to have to continue to as part of our budget development process. So I, I would anticipate this coming back to committee at least once or two more times before we uh, we have a proposed budget for the for next year. No, that makes total sense. Then I, I did have a question about, and I, I know this is uh, moving very quickly, and it's although you know um, it's been a, a week, it's it feels like it's been um, months. I'm sure that the district is giving some considerations to the implications of COVID to the economy on our next year's budget, but I was also wondering what the implications were. And I'm sure, you know, we're still, this is evolving and we don't quite know, but if there's an opportunity for us to understand what the implications are to our current year budget, um, I'm, I'm sure that there are costs associated with virtual learning, um, we'll probably be in a better position in the next few weeks to kind of understand what our um, plans are from an instructional time perspective. I, I know that no one really knows at this point um, whether instructional time is going to count, whether we'll need to extend hours or, or, or time on the back end and, and what the cost might be associated with that. So I wanted to understand um, when, if and when we're going to have a conversation on those lines. And then second, I wanted to kind of understand whether we're engaging with the state about reimbursement uh, to school districts for any of those costs. Ed, I will be looking at our budget in detail to see what costs we may not have moving forward or those costs that um, may have been reduced due to school closure. Um, so I am gonna take um, a look into that. It'll take some time. There might be some additional costs that we have that would offset um, mm -hmm. those reductions. So I'm definitely going to be looking at it in detail. Right now, I haven't heard that there would be any additional reimbursement to school districts. As far as we know, we will continue to receive our funding um, as planned, um, and we are, you know, continuing to pay employees. Um, you know, to go along with what the governor requested. So all of our employees are still receiving um, paychecks as we still receive our funding. Um, so there will be more um, that we'll bring to you in the near future as to the impacts on our. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? No questions. We will move to our next agenda item, which is action items. The first being the approval of the bus purchase. Is there a motion? I can. Mr. Rich. Whoops, I don't sorry. know if you can see me. Oh, sure. Mr. Okay. Uh, I move that the Board of Education approve the bid award as outlined in the March 10, 2020 memo from Aaron Hill for the purchase of 10 school buses to Hoekstra Transportation Inc. in the amount of $954,908, funds to come from capital projects, building and site 2018 fund. Second. I saw the lips of Mrs. Cummings say support. <laughs> All right, we have a motion by Mr. Rich, supported by Mrs. Cummings. Is there any discussion? Mr. Muckamel. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, not exactly on topic, but just a reminder. Ah, there's Ms. Weems. I was just going to say to please bear in mind that because she's calling in uh, to give her the benefit of the doubt on motions and support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Can you hear me? Now we can see now we you. Can, yes. Yes. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Mrs. Smith, will you please do a roll call vote? 
Um, sorry, I, I, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Mr. Johnson? Yes, and I want to make sure everybody remembers to unmute their mic when they vote and right. mute it back. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Cummings? Yes. Ms. Wings? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Mukama? Yes. I myself, yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving to item B, the approval of Visions Unlimited Generator Purchase. Mr. Mukamo. I move that the Board of Education approve the bid award as outlined in the November 25th, 2019 letter from Wakeley Associates Incorporated for the purchase of an emergency replacement generator for Visions Unlimited to Great Lakes Power and Lighting in the amount of $133,000. Funds to come from Capital Projects Building and Site 2018 fund. Support. Support. We have a motion to approve the Visions Unlimited Generate Purchase as read by Mr. Mukamo, supported by Mr. Johnson. Is there any discussion? Mr. Rich. Just real quickly on this, um, I've heard some concerns regarding Great Lakes Power and Lighting, um, just with to the extent of quality of work, and then uh, when they are doing these generators, whether or not they actually have licensed electricians doing the work, um, as opposed to those who aren't following the proper safety procedures and things like that. So I'm just, I just have my concerns on that. There any other discussion? Seeing no discussion. Oh, I'm, whoops, I'm sorry. Green. Cummings. Uh, based on the information that we were provided, my understanding is that um, uh, this bidder was uh, vetted and interviewed. Um, by the uh, well, by many people, uh, many people representing the district. Uh, my understanding is that that issues such as um, uh, licensing and insurance, like th that, those are covered during the the meeting with the um, with the bidder. So in this case, uh, Great Lakes. Um, so if they're there's someone that could speak to that um, process or the questions, the the concerns that Mr. Um, Rich has raised. I would appreciate uh, a little, yeah. little more um, information regarding those concerns. I think we'd have Scott here tonight that could probably weigh in on Mr. Rich's concern. Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. This project. This is a. This is a project that is similar to what we've done with boilers at um, STEAM Academy, uh, where the, it's more of a design prime methodology. Uh, it's a smaller project. Uh, in this case, Brian Smilak of Wakeley Associates would act as kind of the quote unquote construction manager here. Now, Great Lakes Power and Lighting is a vendor we are familiar with. They um, actually are out at Alameda doing all of the work out there. Um, feedback we've received so far has been positive. Um, they are licensed, they, they are able to obtain permits um, relative to this work. Uh, certainly as a condition for work, they do need to provide proof of insurance uh, as well as the required payment performance uh, bonds since their contract would be over $50,000. Um, so all of that would need to be in place prior to any payment and work starting in the field. 
Um, they have been around for a while. Um, I'm not familiar with any specific things, Mr. Rich, but um, the only thing I can tell you right now is uh, our most recent experience has been positive. Uh, they also did work over at uh, Farmington Central High School, as well as the Farmington High School Dance Studio um, this past summer. Um, both projects were completed timely and uh, all required uh, inspections were completed and signed off by the state. So I don't know if that helps answer it. I, I can't promise anything here, but their track record in the district has been good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Any other discussion? Okay, Mrs. Smith, we're moving to a roll call vote, please. Mr. Rich? Uh, no. Ms. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Weems? Yes. Mr. Mukamal? Yes. I myself, yes. And Ms. Green? Yes. Um, you have six yeses. Um, motion passes. Thank you. Moving to item C, approval of the Farmington Early Childhood Furniture Move and Abatement. And this is actually three separate motions, so we'll take them separately. The first one is in regards to the purchase of the furniture. Is there a motion? Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Move the Board of Education approve the board, excuse me, strike that, and move the Board of Education approve the bid awards as outlined in the February 27th, 2020 letter from TMP Architecture for the purchase of furniture from Farmington Early Childhood Center in the amount of 39, strike that, $391,037.44 funds to come from the Capital Projects Building and Site 2018 Fund. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Cummings, to approve the purchase of the Farmington Early Childhood Center uh, furniture for the amount of $391,037.44. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Mrs. Smith, roll call vote, please. Ms. Weems. Yes. Yes. Ms. Cummings. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Mukamal. Yes. Mr. Rich. Yes. Yes. I myself, yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We're now moving to the motion regarding the early childhood move and management services. Is there a motion? Ms. Cummings. I move that the Board of Education approve the bid award as outlined in the March 4th, 2020 letter from Plant Moran Cressa for Farmington Early Childhood Center Move Management Services to professionalmovers.com in the amount of $28,685, funds to come from the Capital Projects Building and Site 2018 Fund. Support. Support. We have a motion to approve the award bid to Plant Moran Cressa for Farmington Early Childhood Center. Move management services in the amount of $28,685, funds to come from the capital project. Ms. Cummings, seconded by Mr. Johnson. Is there any discussion? Uh, to clarify. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. 
and it's uh it's to professionalmovers.com. Thank it's you. The letter from Plant Moran Cressa. Yes, thank you. I apologize. Yep. Management services to professionalmovers.com in the amount of $28,685. Funds to come from the Capital Projects Fund. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Mrs. Smith, we're ready for roll call vote, please. Mr. Rich. Yes. Ms. Cummings. Yes. Ms. Weems. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Mokama. Yes. I myself, yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving to the next one, which is in regards to the abatement services at Farmington Early Childhood Center. Is there a motion? Mr. Mokomo. I move that the Board of Education approve the bid award as outlined in the March 3, 2020 letter from Nova Environmental Incorporated for Farmington Early Childhood Center abatement services qualified abatement services in the amount of $56,000 funds to come from the capital projects building in site 2018 fund. Thank you. Support. I think I heard Mrs. Smith. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Malcolm to approve the bid award as outlined in the March 3rd, 2020 letter from Nova Environmental Inc for the Farmington Early Childhood Center Abatement Services to Qualified Abatement Services in the amount of $56,000 funds to come from the capital projects supported by Mrs. Smith. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, Mrs. Smith, ready? Whoops, did I miss something? Okay, we're ready for a roll call vote, Mrs. Smith. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Miss Weems. Yes. Miss Cummings. Yes. Mr. Mukama. Yes. Mr. Rich. Yes. Yes. I myself, yes. Miss Green. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Ms. Moving. Green, can I just make one clear? You said it was to um, come from the capital projects. Should reflect capital projects building in site 2018 fund. Yes. Just to, to have all of that in there. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to reread? No, I think we're good. I, th coming. I think it's okay, but. Yeah. Okay, we're good. All right, moving to D, uh, which is in regards to the phone system upgrade. Is there a motion? I'll make it. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Move the Board of Education approve the bid award as outlined in the March 5th, 2020 memo from Jeff Zminski in the purchase of a district wide phone system upgrade to Logic Halls in the amount not to exceed. $407,000 funds to come from the capital projects, the building and site 2018 fund. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson to approve the bid award as read to Logic Hallis uh, for the upgrade of the phone system supported by Mrs. Cummings. Is there any discussion? Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, just one thing on this. Um, this may come in lower than $407,000. $407, um, just the way this is written, it says not to exceed, so that could be less than that. So I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. the public was aware of that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing no further discussion, Mrs. Smith, we're ready for roll call vote, please. 
Mrs. Cummings? Yes. Yes. Miss Wings? Yes. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Mukamaw? Yes. I myself, yes. Miss Green? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving to the item E, approval of auditor appointments. Is there a motion? Ms. Weems. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education appoint Plant Moran. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm not going to make this motion. Gotcha. Okay. I'll make it. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. I move the Board of Education appoint Plant Moran PLLC to perform the 2019 2020 financial audit of district funds as outlined in the March 2nd, 2020 memo from Kimberly Pinchak. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson to appoint Plant Moran uh, PLLC to perform the 2019-2020 financial audit of district funds as outlined in the March 2nd, 2020 memo from Kimberly Pinchak, supported by Mrs. Cummings. Is there any discussion? Mrs. Wings. For the record, I uh, recuse myself. Thank you. Um, Smith, we're ready for roll call vote, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Mukamaw? Yes. Um, Ms. Ms. Um, Weems have has re recused herself um, and myself, yes. Ms. Green? Yes, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving to our next item on the agenda, items from the treasurer, Mr. Rich. Okay. I move that the Board of Education approve the expenditures as outlined in the expenditure printout dated March 24, 2020, as follows. General Fund, $8,505,523. General Fund Athletics, $90,154. Nothing from the Debt Fund. Capital Projects 2018 Bond Fund, $1,015,592. From the Nutrition Services Fund, $240,662. And from the Benefit Stabilization Fund, $1,244,680 for a total of $11,096,611. Mr. Mukma, was that you first? Um, Doesn't yeah. matter. Okay, Rich. We have a motion from Mr. Rich to approve the Board of Education expenditures as outlined in the expenditure printout dated March 24, 2020, supported by Mr. Mukma. Any discussion? Okay. Ms. Smith, roll call vote, please. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Weems? Yes. Ms. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Mukamaw? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. I myself, yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving next to our next item is consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent? Yes. Thank you. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the March 10th, 2020 study session along with the personal items as presented. Thank Support. You. Thank you. 
There is a motion by Mr. Johnson to approve the Board of Education as uh, approved the 20, March 24, 2020 consent agenda as read, supported by Mrs. Cummings. Any discussion? Roll call vote again. Ms. Cummings? Yes. Ms. Wings? Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Rich. Yes. Mr. Mukama. Yes. I myself, yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Motion passes. Well, next, uh, we have been requested to reread one public comment that was cut off. Uh, when I did it at the beginning. So I will go there and reread that public comment. It is from Bruce and Sherry McCormick. Our daughter is a senior at Farmington and we are worried about graduation. She is already accepted, paid her deposit, and has scholarships in for Cedarville University. She needs to be able to finish her classes online so she can graduate on time. Right now, there is enrichment only, and that's not going to help her graduate. She lost her high school last year and has worked very hard to succeed and finish well this year. We just want to know what the plan is, at least for seniors like her, who are two months from graduation. Please help them to be successful. Thank you in advance for your effort. I will also just they parents need to continue to watch our website with questions and answers as we continue to learn as we all go along. At this point, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to our community for supporting the bond. Support will help our district to address many important needs of our students. On behalf of the Board of Education, I'd like to acknowledge and thank our administration, staff, parents, and students for coming together and ensuring that our students' needs are first and foremost during this most difficult time. We are aware, are aware that there has been a coordinated effort and so many of you have worked tirelessly as we navigate through these uncharted waters. Your efforts have not gone unnoticed. We appreciate your patience as we work together to figure this out. As a board, we cannot begin to express how incredibly proud we are of our amazing staff. We are very blessed. This virus has impacted each and every one of us in different and personal ways. It is important to come together as a community and support each other as necessary. There are acts of kindness happening all around us. We had a group of staff who collected money to donate food to local hospitals. We have staff sharing curriculum lessons across all content areas, across all mediums. We have board members who have collected and donated much needed supplies to first responders. And our district has donated resources as well to our local first responders. There are just a few of these ways that our Farmington Public Schools continues to shine during this most difficult time. In the coming days, it is crucial that we follow the orders of the governor and do our part to keep this virus from spreading. Our actions can truly make a difference. As a board, we send our thoughts and prayers to each of our families. Please take care of yourself and each other. Be well. Our motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Johnson. So moved. Support. Mr. Rich. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mr. Rich. Any discussion? Everyone be safe. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. This meeting is adjourned. Good evening.